Space is closer than you think. It's only about 100 miles away. That's merely one hour's drive with heavy feet. Now, if you could keep that up for the lifespan of a reliable car, that's about 250,000 miles, but it would take you about four months to complete, but that would get you to the moon. That's the furthest that any human has ever been into space, and it's where we took our first footsteps towards becoming an extraterrestrial species. This is what the Earth looks like as I'm uploading this video. It's Wednesday night, Thursday morning in the eastern United States. That's sunrise there in New York. And in 24 hours time, on Friday morning, <laughs> is going to be the biggest bang that you will never hear. Scientists need to know if there's water on the moon. It expands our options for getting off-world. It's been long contested if water exists on the moon. I mean, we know that it can't exist anywhere where there's direct sunlight. However, in the permanent dark, frigid cold of the craters near the poles of the moon, water would have a vapour pressure about equal to a typical rock, and water could possibly reside there, essentially in perpetuity. Here it's possible that vast amounts of water could have condensed over the ages as comets have hit the moon. Detecting that water has proved tricky, and so now we have decided to take a more direct approach. The lunar crater observation and sensing satellite has now identified a prime target, and on Friday morning will accelerate an impactor weighing about two tons up to about twice the speed of a rifle bullet, and it will steer it in to the permanent dark of this crater. It will impact at 7.31 and 30 seconds Eastern Daylight Savings Time, releasing the same energy as about a ton of TNT. Yet it won't make a sound, for there is no atmosphere on the moon. But damn will it make the ground shake. It'll also make a big flash and throw up a lot of ejectorate. The observations of the ejectorate should be able to tell us what the water composition of the crater was, and the flash should be big enough that it's predicted that even a modest-sized telescope should be able to pick it up. The impact will take place about dawn in New York, and if our skies are clear, I'll certainly try and record it with my scope. And if all goes well, by lunchtime on Friday, the biggest bang that no one ever heard will give us some insight into if water exists in the permanent shadows of the craters of the lunar poles.